Hey, what's going on? This is Billy Newman, and you're listening to the Billy Newman Photo Podcast for October, was it, 3rd? Something like that, 2017. And I'm working on some photo stuff, working on some media stuff. I'm editing some photos. We're getting a pretty good bit done. That's cool. This week's been going by pretty nice. It's, uh, it's October now. It's, like, way cooler than it has been. You're seeing, like, the sun start setting before 7 o'clock. It's just, like, a big difference all of a sudden. Well, it's always weird kind of noticing the seasonal changes that they sort of move through. And it really comes on fast. Like the tree outside of our house, it's a maple. It's some kind of maple tree. They're both, they're both maple trees, but they seem like they're just a little bit of a different variety. It's interesting, though, when you watch it. And uh, one tree always comes on earlier in the year with its bloom of its leaves. And then that same tree always drops those leaves a couple weeks earlier than the other tree next to it. It's just really interesting how... I don't know if it's just the microclimate of the sun that that one tree gets versus the sun that the other tree gets. Maybe they're different varieties altogether. But it's interesting when you kind of look and you watch and you sort of see the uh, the beginnings of the changes of the seasons. But it seems to come by really fast. Probably only have like, what, two, three weeks of it. It's weird how fast it comes, you know. I'm looking at a lot of green trees right now. But in three, four weeks, most of those trees, most of those leaves will already be on the ground. It's kind of a trip. So... Today I fo- posted a photograph from uh, the Oahe Canyon area. It's like really remote southeast Oregon territory. It's really cool out there. I've only gone out there a couple times and, and really truthfully it would need to be, I don't know, it just needs to be explored much more than what I've put my time into it for. But it's just so remote. It's amazing how it is out there. Like um, what we did is uh, when we came in from Boise, we drove down and through that you're kind of in the Oahe area as it kind of flows into I guess the Oahe would flow into the Snake River uh some somewhere around like Ontario Oregon but uh but up above that I guess the Oahe goes up toward Winnemucca which is sort of what I understand or at least kind of it stretches on up there a little bit I was hearing about we ran into this guy uh this kind of (laughs) this kind of uh eccentric mountain man up when we were in the Wallawa Mountains, and he had talked to us. He stopped for a second. He was he, he, he was in like uh, hiking pants and you know a jacket with a handkerchief on. He was probably in his sixties, maybe. And he had told us that uh, he was a uh, I don't know what he was. He was an enthusiast. He'd been out there for maybe like a month or so. Maybe maybe he said like four or five weeks of of being out in the Wallawa Mountains. And he was uh, he had his partner going back into town to get provisions. When, uh, when we ran into him, but he had a tripod and a camera and he was walking around or he was on a hike through the Eagle Cap wilderness trying to find these, these trees, this type of pine that's being affected by climate change. As the climate gets warmer in the Alpine area, uh, as the temperature starts to lift in elevation, it changes the types of tree species that are able to live in the Alpine area there. So I guess it kills them off as the temperature gets higher for the certain type of pine tree. It's like, was it like a two needle pine and a five needle pine? Something like that. But apparently, I guess that's that's what this guy's working on. So he's trying to work on a photo project for this. He talked to us for a while, though, about the Oahe Canyon and about the Snake River and about, uh, I guess, about how before the dams were built, the salmon run would flow up the Columbia River, up the Snake River, up the Oahe River, and you would get salmon run all the way into the interior area of Winnemucca, California, or Winnemucca, Nevada, way out there. So it's just really weird how it would kind of pull up these smaller uh, tributaries of the Columbia from the ocean all the way back into the central part of the state of Nevada too. So kind of a trip, but it was interesting to, uh, to talk to that guy for a few. And then when we were out in the Oahe area, it goes on for a really long time, but there's a few different sections of it. It's a big river, right? Like, so it's a, it's a whole territory of, uh, of land that sort of meanders through that section of Oregon. Um, but really beautiful landscape out there. What we did is we went to Rome and then uh, there's like the pillars of Rome. That's this, uh, this area out there. But then off from that, you can drive, south really for quite a well for a while on a dirt road and then you pull around and we took like this really bumpy little road like a little access road out to this point and we took some really cool photos of the Oahe Canyon it's really pretty right there at least in this spot that we were taking photos of but it's cool I guess if you go a little further you can pull into this uh this three forks region I think there's a dam or there's maybe there's a few dams on the Oahe it seems like that's kind of what I've noticed from it. But there's this backed up area where you can go in. And what I want to do is I want to get a kayak and I want to set up a camping trip and, and, uh, and kind of do like a backpacking trip and just throw the backpack in the kayak and then cut across 
uh, the water, you know, kind of cut down the the Oahe River and then pull out on different sides of it, you know, over a couple of days and do some camping and do some photos. But it seems like a really cool place to uh, to explore uh, the Three Forks area. I guess was that like the Trout Creek Mountains? It's maybe somewhere near there. Maybe it's not too near to there. I guess uh, that whole area it stretches up in a pretty expansive way. Like so, um, so from the Oahe section, then we drove over to like the Burns Junction, and then you have to drive past that, and then you're pretty close to the Alvord Desert. That's when we're driving west, right? So we're way out east, like near McDermott, Oregon, Rome, Oregon. I don't know. It's way out there. I hear that, uh, like, uh, like this week in early October, I hear it's hunting season, and I guess, uh, I guess that's a huge area for, uh, or it's a it's a big district for some of the bigger mule deer, and I guess the elk that are out there. I guess that's a big area to go hunt elk. But I've also heard like the fossil area. There's probably plenty of drainages. That, uh, that work out as good hunting lands for, for this time of year, for whoever's into that. But, yeah, I've just been uh, working on some photo stuff. So, yeah, the photo from the Oahe Canyonlands area is posted. I put that one up. I worked on it for a little while, uh, trying to do some editing stuff. And uh, But, yeah, it's really cool. I like the, that area. I really want to go back there and spend some time there for real. You know, That's the tough thing is it's so remote sometimes, and you're kind of moving over a larger amount of land mass that uh, that whole region just sort of would take, a week, maybe more to kind of get into and explore. And I bet there's a lot of new, interesting photos and visual things you could see down there. It'd just be a cool adventure too. It seems like, uh, like such a cool spot that's not really seen by a lot of other people. So I don't know, an interesting thing and something to put on the opportunities list for, uh, for next season as we, uh, come back into the camping zone. But yeah, it seems like you're going to have a couple months here like winter in Oregon always is of, uh, of it kind of turning down into a little bit of a slower time for the outdoor, outdoor adventure, outdoor camping travel stuff. I don't want to go too slow on it this winter though. It seems like that's kind of what's been something that's got me stuck a couple of times in the last few years. And then it's slow to get started again in the springtime. So I don't know. I'm trying to figure out a way to schedule out a, uh, a productive, lucrative work schedule, uh, more than I have been. I think I need to make more calls. That's really the truth of it. I need to be like on the phone, making calls, booking stuff, setting stuff up, scheduling stuff. I don't know what that means for the Oahe though, but I'm just kind of thinking outside of that. I need to produce more. Does that make sense? There's photography of like me getting in my truck and driving out and camping and, and whatever. And that's really cool. And I like that. And that's travel photography. You know, that's, that's me accomplishing what I'm after, but, uh, but on a higher level than that, I want to try and put that into some kind of use or some kind of, I don't know, I just want to make it valuable. I want to make it worth something. I want someone to know about it or care about it or need it at the end. And, uh, and I mean, of course, like everybody that's trying to make photos is trying to get them to that point. But, uh, but it's also interesting, too, because sometimes you go out and you shoot on spec or, you know, on speculation that you'd be able to sell it or you'd be able to do something with it. And that seems like an interesting kind of market also, if you can find the buyers or if you can set those relationships up. And I really want to try and do that more than I have in the past. And uh, a cool opportunity has come up for me. I've been trying to gather a bunch of photographs of, uh, of Lake County, Oregon. And sort of like I'm talking about of, of selling photographs on spec that you'd already shot. I'm trying to license these photographs um, to like a travel agency that's uh, in Southern Oregon. And it's really cool. It's a cool opportunity for me to get some photos and have them put up on uh, like brochures on the website and stuff. But, uh, but it's a cool connection to have to get some of those images put up and kind of put in a stable way up onto a website, up onto their marketing material. Um, and goodness knows how much I've talked about Lake County, Eastern Oregon, Fort Rock, Lakeview, Heart Mountain, all that stuff. So I'm trying to get those photographs together. Some of the cool landscape pieces, maybe some of the wildlife stuff or uh, just some of the the natural images of that region, and I'm trying to put that together and, and, and send it out. But part of it is trying to learn about licensing commercial work, which is something I've not really understood much in the past before. I've kind of understood, like, set up a contract before the date of an event, be paid to shoot or be paid to provide coverage, and then, you know, provide the photos as a product back or something. But I haven't really done a lot of spec shooting where I sell those off later as almost like stock photography, but kind of like specific to one client who gets those. I don't know. I don't understand it at all. Do you guys understand it? Shoot me an email. Goodness. Uh, but I'm trying to find out some information about uh, licensing work uh, for digital use, for print use, for like royalty free use, 
And then like, what's the price of that? What's the use? What's the, what's the mark or what's the, what would you say? Like the budget? What's the budget of the company or of the organization I'm working with? What am I supposed to charge them for the value of the work that they're getting? I don't know, all that stuff. It just seems kind of interesting. But it seems like there's possibility there and there's lucrative options. But it also seems like uh, like a way to meet, for me to get caught not making any money. Um, so I don't know. It's been kind of cool. It's uh, really neat, though, to get a chance to sell some of the photos and the landscape photos from Houston, Oregon to find someone that uh, – was interested in was interested in them and was wanting to uh, make a use of them. So really cool thing, and something I have to try a ton more. Man, that's what I've been frustrated about. I've been thinking about that a little bit of um, of like what what do I spend my time on? What do I work on? What do I get done? And uh, I was I just finished reading a, a really interesting book that I'd, I'd read before. Maybe I talked about before. And you guys should read this too, especially if you're an artist or a creative or you're running a business. Any any kind of pursuit like that is a really interesting book, but uh, it was it was the war of art, not the art of war, but the war of art. It was a more modern book. I think it was written by Stephen Pressfield. Really interesting book though about creativity. I think it was a book written under, or I think the author of the book, of course, right, is a writer, and so he was writing on the position of resistance, this term that he, he sort of defines in the book as resistance. It's that force that pushes against us when we're trying to work on something entrepreneurial or something creative. Uh, it's that thing that, that breaks our own rules as we kind of work on it. But uh, it was a fascinating book. It was, it was really interesting just as a person who's trying to work on creative pieces like this and that feeling that you get that it's not getting done or that it's not getting worked on or that you want to spend your time doing something else rather than that thing that is the priority of making photos of doing the work of getting it done and uh and i think as that goes i don't know it's that preoccupation of trying to procrastinate that's sort of an easy way to put the idea of resistance it's that notion in your own mind that you want to procrastinate that's resistance that's this outside force kind of pushing against your ability to get the most done or to, to be productive or to follow through with what your vision is, you know? Um, so it was a really fascinating book, but I kind of recognize, recommend that everybody try and take a look at that and, uh, try and get some insight, I guess, about the creative process or about, uh, the way that you, you sort of focus yourself and go out and uh, try and get work done in the world. But as that comes into my photography and about what I'm trying to do, I really like spending the time taking photos, but there's just that whole other field, a whole other region of it, a business development where you got to, you got to find people, you got to find the clients that you're going to get. You got to send them the emails. You got to really push and, uh, try and get stuff booked, try and get contracts signed. I've never done that at all. I don't know anything about that. So, uh, boy, I got a big, uh, a big hill to climb, I guess, as, uh, as the business part goes. It'll be fun, though. I don't know. I'm really looking forward to trying to get into that more over the next coming years. And uh, I've really been happy working more on weddings, working more on like the licensing work stuff that I was talking about and work, you know, just working like contract gigs has been really cool to try and uh, supplement an income. And uh, I don't know, just trying to add to it. it just seems like that's what the business is like. It seems like anybody who's really working as a professional at a higher level in a lot of different industries, it really, it seems like they ultimately move into private practice, like a doctor, right? Like you think about a doctor early on, they've got a lot of work to get done and a lot of grind to get through before they're really given a position of respect that allows them the mobility to do the things that they would want to do. Even after they're making money, even after they're given the respect of being a doctor, it's just hard to then be a doctor and then make a life of that in a real way. Like it's hard. It's not hard for doctors. It's a lot harder for photographers. But if we think of that same model for a second of like building a career, like how long do you need to be in this school? Then how long do you need to be in that school? Then how long do you need to train with this group of the best people? How many ideas can you get to share? How long do you have to work in some sort of not that great of place that is like an ER or something like that when you get out of medical school? And uh, what is it, a residency? You have to do you have to do a lot of hard work, I guess, before you get to do the thing you want. It's sort of a a truism of life, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if I've found that to be true or not. It seems really quite easy out here, I guess, for a lot of us, but also super hard to do what you want. So or to do really what you want, to really get something done. Um and I'm trying to work on it still. Yeah. Resistance. I don't know. It gets me down every once in a while. 
probably most days. That's that's what fights me on this podcast all the time. Uh, <laughs> knowing that I need to do it, but then hardly ever doing it. Shoot. So it's fun uh, getting to talk to you guys, though. Getting to hang out for a few. Getting to journal out my day. Getting to podcast out some of my day. Getting to make some media stuff. Getting some posts done. It's all been pretty good. It's a cool October. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm working on today. So look forward to some Oahe photos, some Alvord photos, some truck photos. That's what I'm putting up pretty soon. But thanks a lot for listening to this episode of the Billy Newman Photo Podcast. You can check out some of my work at Instagram.com. And that's at Billy Newman. And until next time, I'll talk to you later.